week's newsletter, it's Ryder Cup week. It couldn't be any more exciting. Well, do you know what? I don't know why it is. I'm not that excited about it. I don't know if it's because it's in Italy. I'm not that excited about it. I don't know. But anyway, the Americans will most certainly be wearing some outrageously bad outfits, as they always do. I don't know how they can possibly do this every time, but there's uh, some absolute honking things they've worn in the past. Europe are usually okay. Uh, so hopefully, I think it's Peter Millar, that's how they pronounce it allegedly, Peter Millar, uh, will be designing their stuff. So who's who's got America's stuff? I don't know. I don't know. It's probably, I don't know, CNA. Anyway, yes. So will the Europeans win? I think they will. I think they will win. I do. So enjoy the weekend's festivities. Enjoy them. So what's been happening in the golf club? Well, we're getting new caterers. Yes, the club uh, feedback. You'll see the questionnaire go out and we've got new caterers lined up to come in. Um, they have a pedigree of golf clubs behind them. Uh, young Fraser has experienced their catering down at Kirkhill and he said they are brilliant, they are exactly what we need. Um, they understand how a golf club operates and the club are listening to you. So stay tuned for more improvements to the golf club. Anything that you've suggested for me and uh, our uh, feedback we will be addressing as well. The first tea issue on a Saturday is difficult. Uh, discussions with uh, with Ross regarding the timings and stuff like that. We're trying to get it to run on time, but seven minutes, we're in discussion. We'll try and make that better for you as well. And I will be zooming about in my buggy, telling people off for slow play and probably falling out with a few of them. Anyway, we are listening and stay tuned for more wonderful developments. Now, what's got on my nerve this week? Well, fitting, fitting's my bag. Uh, and let me tell you a couple of stories. One is of a chap that has been to this wonderfully, wonderful uh, new setup um, in Glasgow that is meant to be very good at fitting. Uh, the guy is an absolute bear of a guy. Bear of a guy. Swings it with such speed and his transition is unbelievably powerful and he got fitted into the lightest golf shafts that he could not control he went back and they still said they were fine and they weren't fine so what I'm doing this week is I'm taking those clubs apart and I'm putting different shafts in them for the guy who cannot get on with them uh, shocking absolutely shocking and it's true absolutely shocking i just cannot fathom why he would have been fitted into these shafts it's just mind-boggling mind now, now, now the shaft sometimes people like the feel of a shaft and that's fine but these things are as light you couldn't feel anything that was going on so uh, unfortunately for the customers having to spend another few hundred pounds getting his clubs fixed mental so the second fitting disaster uh, happened not far away from here and the customer came to see me uh, struggling with golf in general, spent nearly £3,000 on a leading brand's clubs. Now the fitter who fitted into a screen but with no projection image, no start line, anything like that. And he got a, the guy, got a, the fitter got a biro out and marked a cross in the screen for the guy to hit at. So he couldn't see the ball flight. Um, so the guy's got his clubs, struggling, he's come to see me. And it looks like the fitter has just gone with the guy's stature and his age and made the clubs made his iron shorter which has pushed the strike even further to the toe uh, than I've ever seen. The guy could hardly get the ball in the face so if the club was a little bit longer it would have brought the, the, the strike in a little bit more to, in, into the face. Uh, he's just looked at me and said oh you're a, 
a 60 odd year old guy, you're small, you're going to need short clubs fitting over in 10 minutes. Now, the guy hasn't been going on with his clubs, especially his driver that he made shorter uh, because of his stature, didn't even measure where the ball hit in the face. So the guy's not getting any distance out of it whatsoever. So the guy sees this fitter at a, at a range and goes up to him and goes, listen, can I have a word? I'm really struggling with, uh, with the clubs. And the fitter for this major company goes, well, it's not the club, it's you. Without seeing, without even knowing what the guy is swinging like, because he's not seen him for, I don't know, maybe two months, and he's only spent 20 minutes with him. So that guy spent £2,800 in clubs, believing that it was going to help him. And it's not. It's shocking. Absolutely shocking. So that guy, that fitter just says, I don't want anything to do with you now. You know? These fitting events that you can go to uh, may seem great, but I can assure you they don't care. They they'll say it's not they'll say it's not a selling exercise, but it has to be. It has to be a selling exercise. I don't let any manufacturer come here and fit none because of experiences that I've had before, and this poor gentleman has spent nearly £3,000 in clubs and that fitter wouldn't even give him the time of day. It is appalling, ladies and gentlemen. It is appalling. That's why we get people to go away. If they've got any issues with clubs, they come back and see us and we will rectify it. If there is an issue, if there's something wrong, we will help you. But this, I cannot believe that people still go to these events and think that they're going to get the best service because it's free. It's not free when you spend nearly £3,000. It's mental. Trust me. Don't do it. You will regret it. That's my lecture. Over for the week. Um, I hope you've enjoyed my lecture. It's just to educate. You know, it's think about things, rationalise it, and you will come to the same conclusion. It's not free. It's a selling exercise. Okay, enjoy the Ryder Cup. I've been Graham Bell. I've been uh, lecturing you, uh, but it's for your benefit. Salute.